Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is the GWIC air filter. This is essentially a HEPA air filtration unit for use with your laser engraver or cutter. And I want to approach this video a little bit like a buying guide. What is this thing? How does it work? What are the features? Do kind of a comparison with some of the other stuff on the market and give you some of my experiences after, you know, having used this for and a dozen hours or so. So let's get started and feel free to use the chapters to skip around and find your favorite moments of this video. So what is this thing and why should you care about it? Well, if you've been using laser cutters or engravers for any length of time, you know that the smell, the fumes, the smoke, and the exhaust is kind of the biggest downside to using them, and you have to do something with it. You can't just let it go inside your workspace. So typically you would exhaust this outside, out a window, out a door, but there's not always a way to do that. If you're using this inside, maybe in an office work setting, something like that, you might not have that option. So that's where this baby comes in. Basically, it is just a metal box with a hose on the top that goes directly back to the laser. You have a large stack of um, filters and then you have a fan in the bottom. So it basically sucks in the exhaust from the laser, runs it through filters, and then spits it out the bottom. And, you know, in theory and in practice, you shouldn't really get any fumes or smells or any particulates coming out of this. So that's the whole idea behind it. This unit retails for about $850. However, if you use my coupon down below, you can get it for $750, and this one actually does have free shipping on it, so that is gonna be the price that you pay. The thing to note about these is the filters. There's about four different filters inside of here. This particular unit is a HEPA filtration, so it can do the very small particles. The filter stack is consumable, and they listed anywhere between about three to six months worth of use. I really wish they listed in number of hours because that's kind of more applicable. But in any event, it's three to six months for the filter stack, and the filters are about $150 for the full stack. All of this does seem maybe a little bit high at first, but we will look at some of the competition later on, and you can see that this is actually a pretty reasonable price for a larger HEPA unit like this. I've been on YouTube long enough to know that right now someone is typing down in the comments that they bought a $10 fan at a garage sale, and they pointed out the window, and it has more CFMs, and that's perfectly fine, and why would anyone spend $750? Hey. That's great. You're awesome. Everyone loves you, by the way. But there are a lot of instances where this makes sense. Let's say you're in an apartment. You maybe not don't have access to an outside window, or the only place that you have for your laser doesn't have access to outside. You're in an office building. Um, there's a lot of reasons where you wouldn't necessarily have access to vent directly outside on a window. I know for me, if it's bitterly cold outside, I don't like, you know, opening up the door and venting the hose outside because then I lose all the heat inside the shop. Additionally, there's a lot of materials that are particularly nasty and even venting outside, they can still kind of blow back in. And so you just want to exhaust all of that outside. Leather is really nasty. If you've never cut leather, it smells for a very long time acrylics, some plastics, things like that. So there are a lot of reasons why you would want to use something like this. And I'm gonna say this, you either need this or you don't. If your, if your current solution works for you and you're looking at this thinking, why would I ever buy it? You probably don't need this. But there's a bunch of people that are probably salivating at the idea of being able to cut with their laser inside their house and have no fumes. If you're one of those people, this is pretty cool for you. But if you don't have a need or you don't really see the point in it, then this isn't the right product for you. So let's actually take a little bit of a look at the unit itself. Up top, you've got this four inch hose that comes out of it. It's on these casters, which are actually very easy to roll. It's kind of almost problematic for filming. And then you have these handles. It's about 50 pounds. I don't know how much you're gonna be like lifting this. You got these little um, hinge things on the side. We'll undo those. This top comes off. You can see the inlet right there, and then the top pre-filter. So we can take this out, and you can see I have definitely been using this, and whew, that smells pretty bad. So then next up, we've got the um, next stage filter. It looks very similar. 
we have yet another one of these. So this is all kind of the same material, same stage. And then whatever gets through there goes down into this filter stack. Look at that, nice little pleated filter. And, oh wow, that smells very, very, very smoky. And then this whole filter stack should come out. It's obviously going to be a little bit tight. Oh my god. It's oddly heavy. And there you go. So this is the activated charcoal filter. Let me see what it looks like from the bottom side. Yeah, and you can hear some stuff rattling around here. This, this is actually quite quite heavy. There's a lot of weight to this. So this is the whole filter stack. So you basically have three stages. You got the activated charcoal, the pleated filter down there, and then the um, ones that sit on top. And let's see if we can see down inside. So inside there is just a big fan in the bottom. So I'd say, you know, a good portion of the bottom is the actual fan itself. We have an exhaust here, right there. And then if we flip it around this side, this is where the blast regulator is. This is basically just the fan speed control, and then we have the power input. This thing's supposed to be about 300 watts, I think they say. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Once again, it is just a large box with a fan in the bottom, and then a bunch of filters stacked inside. Not really too much more than that. Next up, let's get an idea of the sound. It's actually relatively quiet considering what it is. So I'm gonna turn this all the way up to max. I'm right here off camera. And that's what it sounds like. It's vague air noise sound. It's um, really not too bad. It doesn't have any weird buzzing or rattling or anything like that. And if you've ever used a laser, lasers can be quite loud with the pump and everything else going on. So this really isn't too bad. I think they listed like 55 decibels, which yeah, seems about right. That's what it sounds like. So here's my favorite part, comparison time. We'll get to kind of compare this to what else is on the market. And fun fact, I do these kind of comparisons before I ever accept any kind of sponsorship because, you know, spoiler, this is a sponsor video. They did send this to me, but I like to look at these comparisons to see if the product is actually worth it. If this thing is just junk or way overpriced, I'm never going to accept it. So I put together this little comparison table um, with the GWIC Cloud Air Filter, the one we're talking about, um, BOFA, the Glowforge, the Beam Air Filter, as well as the X-Tool. And I think this is a good cross-representation. There are a lot of other things out there. If you go on Amazon and look, there's a lot of stuff in the two to $500 range, but they're very small and the filter stack really isn't HEPA. It's not, it's, it's not the same kind of thing. It's basically just like, I don't know, running it through a pillowcase with polyfill. It's a very, very different thing. So this is all stuff that is roughly comparable to the GWIC Cloud. So first off, if we look at the price, um, the GWIC Cloud is one of the cheaper options. The X-Tool smoke purifier is definitely a lot cheaper, but looking at the pictures and looking at the dimensions, it's about a third or half the size of what this is. And when you're dealing with filters, a larger filter is always gonna be better. You get a lot more airflow, less air restriction, and the filter will last a lot longer. So yeah, the X-Tool is definitely a lot cheaper, but it is made for a much, much smaller laser. BOFA is kind of the industry standard for this. They're kind of the more industrial grade version. And I did pick the AD Access because it's one of the smaller and cheapest ones that they have. They have a lot of models in the two to $5,000 range, which are you know much, much, much more expensive. The BOFA AD Access is the most affordable that is made for lasers, but it only has a two inch hose on it. So it is a much, much smaller unit as well. The Glowforge is about $1,300 and 
I mean, it's a Glowforge, but there's no information. Because it's a Glowforge, there's no data sheet, there's no information, no specs whatsoever, but it does seem very, very similar to the GWIC in a lot of the ways. It might even be made by the same company, who knows. The Beam, I actually really like. This is sold through Matter Hackers, and I think Beam is um, their line of uh, CO2 lasers. And it's actually, it's pretty nice. It has a USB interface, which is um, one of the only ones that has this. So the laser can actually turn on and off the unit, which is kind of cool but it is a bit smaller. You know, it's probably about 50% the size of the GWIC and some of the others. So it is once again, one of the smaller ones. If we look at filter price, only the Xtool and the GWIC actually have a sub $200 filter. Most of them are selling these filters in the $250 range. Seeing as that's a consumable, that is something to take into account. So yeah, that's kind of my comparison here. I still think, the GWIC is probably the largest and has the largest filter out of all of them. The one big downside, and I'll mention this in the cons at the end, is the pre-filters, those little fuzzy things on the very top that were really nasty. Those have the shortest life because they're kind of catching the most amount of stuff. And only the beam, from what I saw, only the beam allows you to buy those separately. And with heavy use, they're saying that those need to be replaced about one to three months in, where everything else is like three, six, or 12 months. So you can only buy the whole filter stack, but you really only need to replace the top one. So that's a bit of a bummer. But hopefully this gives you an idea of everything that's kind of out there. And it's, it's actually a pretty decent deal compared to everything else. It's probably most similar to, I guess, the Glowforge or the Bofa, but at significantly less money. So this is the part of the video where I kind of share some of my experiences. I've put a few hours on that. Um, it's hard to rack up a ton of hours with laser because everything goes so fast. But I'd say it does do the thing. It's not a 100% reduction. If you have a very small bedroom that you're putting this in and you expect to have no smells whatsoever, that's maybe just a bit unrealistic, at least with this unit that I'm testing. Maybe a higher grade industrial BOFA unit could do that, but I think at this price level that might be a bit unrealistic. However, when I do relatively small jobs, like if I'm just cutting out a um, stencil, like I'm probably gonna show some footage of cutting out the um, back panel test for my speaker controller. If we're doing something like that, I can cut that out and not have any detectable smell or scent or smoke whatsoever out in the shop. That's actually pretty easy. Doing small jobs, doing small runs um, with cardboard, some plastics, wood, things like that, it's just like all the smell and scent went completely away from your laser cutting experience. However, if you're doing longer jobs out of acrylic or really smelly plastics or you know, potentially a leather, you're gonna have some detectable odor afterwards. I don't think there's any real good way around that other than a long vent outside. However, one of the things that I suspect is happening is you still get a lot of odors and smell from inside the unit. And when I was doing the acrylic last week, it was the cut acrylic that was actually making the smell. You could pick up the cut piece that was still inside the machine, and that is what was giving off the odor. So I still think there's more going on. I was kind of putting my face right to the exhaust of the air filter, and I couldn't detect anything coming out of the air filter, but you lift this lid open, and that's where you end up getting the fumes. So that's something to take into consideration. If you are overly sensitive to fumes, if this is kind of a you know, continued issue for you, this is a nice um, interim solution to where you can actually use the air filter to pre-filter the exhaust that then goes outside, because I know I have a lot of issues with it kind of blowing back in through the open door, open window, things like that. So it actually does considerably help to filter out those smells. And I think if you're doing occasional cutting, if you're not doing super long cutting, it does a great job. It is fantastic for that. If you're running an Etsy shop that's doing leather day in and day out and you need it to be inside, there's gonna be some caveats. I would caution you a little bit that you're still going to have some detectable sense and it's still gonna build up over time. You might look at additional solutions or just kind of live with that bit of a compromise. So that's kind of my two cents on it. It definitely does the thing and definitely works. It's just that it's not gonna be 100% in all situations. 
So let's try and wrap this video up. Once again, I'm trying to approach this video kind of like a buying guide since I actually have the unit here. I've messed with, I've played with it, I know the ins and outs, I know all the quirks and features. And so that's what I'm just trying to convey to you. If you wanna buy it, cool. If you don't, that's fine too. So pros and cons, got my little cheat sheet here. I think for the pros, it is one of the larger units on the market. A lot of the other ones in that comparison are kind of smaller units and they're more geared towards the 30 or 40 watt lasers. A lot of them have the little two inch inlets. They're gonna have a lot less airflow and a lot smaller filters. So this is actually one of the bigger ones on that list. And if I compared them kind of more to similar sized, they would be a lot more expensive. So that leads me off into the next section, which is it's probably the best value that I've seen. I mean, I'm gonna be a little bit biased here, but from my research, I couldn't really find anything that was cheaper that was on the same level. The X-Tool is a little bit cheaper by $50, but it's a significantly smaller unit with a little, you know, tiny two inch inlet and a much smaller filter. Additionally, the filter is only about $150 versus the $250 for everything else. So that's actually kind of nice. And, you know, in terms of ease of use, size, quietness, all that stuff, it's fine. I think if you have a CO2 laser like this, the size isn't going to be an issue and the noise isn't going to be an issue. This machine alone is louder than that down there. So the air filter is going to fit in most environments. It's going to be, you know, the right level of quiet. So all of that is kind of the pros. For the cons, I don't like the idea that it's not controllable through the laser. There's a couple open ports in the back of this, and I know for a fact the controller that they're using has the ability to have some pins to turn things on and off, and maybe someday I'll hack this machine so I can actually talk to that. But there's nothing on the back. There's not like a trigger input. There's not a USB input. There's no way to actually do that without hacking it. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I think the Beam and maybe one of the others, I think some of the Bofas have this as well. There's no timer or indication of hours. It would be really nice if it just had a simple resettable digital timer so you could say, oh, I'm, I've hit 100 hours. For me, I don't always use my laser. There's some points in time where I use it a lot and then maybe I go a month or two without ever turning it on. So I'm not gonna be able to effectively track how many hours is on it. So that's a little bit of a bummer and I think a big oversight. The adjustment of the airflow seems pointless to me. I always have it on full. I don't know why you'd ever turn it down from that. You always kind of want the most airflow. If you're using it, you're using it because you're cutting something. And if you're cutting something, you want to get the fumes away. So I don't see the adjustment really being necessary. The build quality is fine. I think this is very similar to what I was saying about the actual GWIC cloud is it's fine. It's just kind of roughly folded and roughly welded steel that is then very heavily painted over. It's not gonna win any design awards. This doesn't look like, you know, Apple products. It's a little bit rough, but totally fine. Um, this is kind of a weird one is, I really wish they gave you the ability to buy the pre-filters. Even though the filter stack is one of the cheapest on the market, some of the others allow you to buy just those top filters, which are the ones that wear out the soonest. And they're probably the cheapest ones, the activated charcoal and the actual HEPA filter in the middle. Those are the most expensive. It'd be really, really nice if they would let you just, you know, $20, help $50. Give me the option to buy those top ones, which are gonna be need to be replaced much sooner. That would be nice. And lastly, I think this is maybe just a con for everything in this um, segment, is it's not a perfect solution. If you expect to hook this up and just completely get rid of any scent or any detection that you've cut anything, it's just unreasonable. So I'm listing it as a con just because I want to set some realistic expectations for anyone watching this video. It is a significant, significant reduction in the amount of fumes and smells associated with using a laser, but it is by no means a 100% reduction. It is not a full, complete solution to it. So. That's my two cents. Uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this. Um, this is obviously a sponsor video. They sent this for review and the link down below does help me and support my channel. So if this is something you're looking at, please use the link down below. You get a hundred bucks off, which is pretty cool. So hopefully you got something out of this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.